Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on the 11th day of the Chom's MediHubs Foundation Black History Month event. We are certainly glad to have you come along for this afternoon um, to both listen as well as see us here um, doing our presentation on day 11 of, once again, the Chom's MediHubs Black History Month event. We are here today with Ms. Sarah Faison, and she's going to tell us all about the benefits of gardening, um, how gardening has helped both physically and mentally in her role that she now has as a retiree. Um, she is the owner of Ida Community Garden, a give back garden focused on healing the mind, body, and soul. Ida Community Garden is located in Sanford, North Carolina. Additionally, she is an author and the founder of the Kindness Matters Facebook group, where she is making a difference in many people's lives. Once again, that mental aspect comes into play and in making a difference in people's lives as we read, and I can say we, because I'm a member of that Kindness Matters group, where we are able to see her, you know, see the many thoughts that other people are putting out about being kind and just the strength of being kind and how it plays into humanity. Sarah retired from a long and successful career as a corporate professional. She enjoys volunteering with her local botanical garden and as a hospice volunteer. Sarah's thoughts are more focused on the age population that is so often taken advantage of while the majority live on a fixed low income. Sarah earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from Rutgers University and has a master's degree in food marketing from St. Joseph University. So without further ado, and actually I have one last thing and one great and wonderful thing for me and for us on the Chimes Many Helps Foundation is that Sarah is one of our board members. So with that being said, I am so graciously blessed to have her as a friend, as a board member who offers us guidance and offers us you know, mentorship uh, because she's been here before and she's done so much in the nonprofit space. So without much further ado, I want to go ahead and turn it over to Sarah, where she can tell us all about the benefits of gardening. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm excited to be here today. Thank you, Sandra, for that nice intro. And um, I'm going to be sharing with you over the next 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, about some of the benefits of gardening. I know gardening has um, been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. I was introduced to gardening by my grandmother who I used to love. I used to go stay my summers with her and I would watch her be out in her garden humming and picking flowers and picking vegetables and shelling beans and just looked so happy and calm and peaceful while she was doing this. And um, fast forward, when I became an adult, I too found that I really love growing plants. Um, I'm an urban, urban young lady. And um, born in the city of Newark, Brick, Brick City. And so I did not have the opportunity to have a lot of space um, initially where I was able to do a lot of gardening. But working full time, and I was also an entrepreneur, and I made the decision during the pandemic that I wanted to live a different life, I decided to relocate back down to North Carolina where my grandparents, you know, lived and reside and where they had their farm and to be able to do something that I really wanted to do was to take the land that they had left for us for the for the children and the grandchildren and great grandchildren as well and be able to try to restore it back to what it was like when I was a young girl visiting my grandparents. So I am um, the president of Ida's Community Garden and what gardening has done for me and has done for many other people is it provides community, especially a community garden. A community garden brings people together. And coming out of the pandemic, 
we really needed to get reconnected again in a way. So many people were battling with mental illness and depressions and so many things. And it changed so much about how we were living and everything. And even in terms of food, when um, the p- pandemic first happened, Sandra, I found myself going to the grocery store and being limited to what I could buy. So there was times I could only buy, you know, a limited amount of produce, a limited amount of, of um, meat. And so with that, I was thinking, I would like to be able to be more empowered. So I think that I want to try growing some of my own food. And I do know that you can grow food in containers. And that was something that I started to think about is that, wow, we all kind of have the power if we don't have a lot of space to still be able to grow food um, in containers. And so when I came to North Carolina, because that's where I relocated to, um, I found myself coming to a to the land that needed to be restored and the land needed to be restored. And I thought it shouldn't just be for me. I would love to create a community for my family, for my cousins and for the people that are living in the area of the garden and for other people as well. And so I wanted to do a community garden because I felt that it was critical to try to bring people back together. And so a community garden, one of the benefits is is bringing people together, getting people to have a sense of purpose, um, getting synergy because you're bringing multiple people together and the sum of the group is, is so much better than the sum of the one or the sum of the two. And so the community garden also has allowed me to develop some meaningful relationships with many different people of the community that I have had the opportunity to interact with. Um, Some on a different level than others, but I find that um, just being able to have the opportunity to just get together with people is very therapeutic. To be able to bounce your ideas off of somebody else is very therapeutic. And so a community is is what I have always enjoyed, even as a young girl growing up in the inner cities of North New Jersey, is I still had a, a community. I grew up on in this area called Seymour Avenue, and basically everyone on Seymour Avenue knew everyone, and the parents watched out for the children, the children watched out for the elderly, My mom would have me go feed people, take food to them. So community has always been a big part of my life. And with gardening, it is definitely something that is so part of my life that I can't imagine not including in my life. Um, So when we think about community garden, one of the things that is obvious to most people is that it is definitely physical work. <laughs> there is a lot of physical activity in maintaining the garden. There are um, just a lot of things to build it up. And in my case, Ida's Community Garden is relatively just a few years old. So we are doing a lot of physical things and building structures, um, just p- putting things inside the garden, raised beds, um, just areas for seating because we're really focused on a couple of things. We're focused on edibles, which of course, most of you think of garden, you think of food, but we're also focused on ornamental plants. Ornamental plants beautify a garden and we are interested in growing ornamental plants to be able to give back to people to be able to partner with some funeral homes and be able to donate flowers um, for situations where they're needed, for hospice patients, for senior homes. So we're looking for many ways to be able to, to even share our ornamental flowers that we are growing at the garden. Um, and we are growing herbs. And, and that is also to uh, for many reasons. Some of them are for medicinal purposes and some are to enhance while we're cooking. Um, So Sandra, have you, um, do you cook with herbs? I 
Don't hear you. Yeah, no, that's because I'm on mute. So I'm okay. still here. I haven't went anywhere, but I put myself on mute because a lot of times when we're both off of mute, it picks up the echoing sound. So I just hold okay. myself on mute until you ask me to come on. Um, I do when I cook. <laughs> what are that's some of your favorite herbs? Right. Um, I, I, you know what? My favorite herbs, because I love baking more than I love cooking, are like vanilla or like the lavender or, you know, the spearmint, yes. stuff like that. Because I like, I prefer baking more so than I do anything else. Have I grown herbs? No. I'm here in Chicago, where we live at anyway. It's not really a lot of space for us to do a lot of herbal, you know, our, a lot of herbal gardening. Um, but I do frequent the farmer's market where there's fresh produce grown there and support as much as I possibly can them um, there um, is what I do do. Okay, but I have do you ever... have to um, cook with, you know, fresh herbs. But I know that fresh herbs are better than, yeah. you know, a lot of the store-bought herbs. But I frequent as much as I can and I support as much as I can. So one of the things when we're talking about benefits is talking about nutritional value of your um, fruits and vegetables and herbs. When we're buying from the store, we really don't know um, what the process has been. And so, yes, I definitely recommend going to farmer markets if you're not growing it yourself. But I would like to share today that it is relatively easy to grow herbs. And there's um, something that I'm currently doing called winter sowing. And it is simply um, taking milk jugs like or soda bottles and you put your you cut it in half and you basically open it, fill it with soil. And then you just sit it outside and let nature do its thing. You put your seeds in it and it's like a little mini greenhouse and you can grow your lavender, you can grow mint. Um, and one of the things I do want to tell you about mint is that mint likes to take over the space. And so that's called um, invasive, like when it becomes an invasive kind of species. So you would want to grow that particular herb in a pot so that you can kind of control it. If, you know, so that it doesn't take over some of the other plants and everything. So when you're growing your own food, you know that it's straight from the garden. So you have the opportunity to know that it has nutritional value. You know about the soil. You know what kind of nutrients you have put in the soil, what kind of fertilizer you put into the soil. So one of the beauties of me moving into the gardening aspect is I can just walk right out of my door and cut some rosemary, some sage, because I do like to bake food and I like to enhance it with herbs. And so it's as simple as just walking outside, snipping off some sage. If I want to make a tea and I want lavender or I want like a mint tea, just snipping off. And you can grow these things in a container. But of course, when you're getting to some of your larger, um, the volume and some of the vegetables, um, you do need a little bit more space, but you're still able to do some things. And it's like a five gallon pail that you could buy at a big box store. So nutrition is one of the reasons that I did want to move to gardening. And it's a benefit is that your food is healthier because you have more say into the pest control. If, if, it, if you want to be, um, you know, pesticide free, you can control that when you're doing your own gardening. And so there are other options other than just spraying your garden to kill, you know, pests that you think are not good pests because there are a good pests and then there are that we call those the beneficial pests. But then there's some that are not beneficial. And so um, you have other options that you can do to control those type of things when you are doing a community garden. So we talked about just the sense of community with them is one of the top benefits of having a community garden, the social aspect that it provides for the people coming together. It gives people a sense of feeling included. And that is something that is um, very important. People wanna be seen, people wanna be heard, people wanna know that others care about them. And so we want to be able to provide that for people and community gardens can definitely provide that. So we also talked about the physical work, the weeding that has to go on 
to uh, maintain unwanted plants. And a weed is simply an unwanted plant. So if you have a plant that is growing in an area that you do not want it, you can refer to it as a weed. Um, but someone else may like that plant there in a, a spot that wouldn't be a typical spot, and they would not refer to it as a weed. They would simply say that it is a plant. And so we are looking to look at what are some of the benefits that we have when we are talking about it. Did you know that just being out in the sun doing gardening provides you with vitamin D, which is good for your immune system? good for your bones. It allows your bones to better absorb calcium. Um, some of the other benefits is that it helps with our sleep pattern because, you know, it, it provides melatonin, which uh, serotonin, which helps us sleep better at nighttime. And so there are some real benefits of doing the physical exercise, being out there, as well as getting that vitamin D, as well as it's helping our body. Of course, you do want to wear sunscreen and protective gear, you know, dependent on the temperature so that you don't find yourself, you know, having an adverse effect from too much sun. So I definitely recommend that you wear your sunscreen, wear protective um, headgear so that um, it protects you from excessive sun. And gardening also helps with the mood. And so that's one of the nice things about gardening is that it's a mood enhancer. And so I love being out in the garden. I literally could be out there from morning to night and the time goes by so fast because it's just so relaxing to me. I love seeing the accomplishment of things coming together. I love looking and seeing the plants grow. Um, you know, there's always surprises out in the garden for me. So I see lots of benefits to having a garden, a personal garden. I see benefits for the community garden. And so what no normally happens is um, often in a town, a city, them, they would have a plot of land that is owned and they provide raised beds and they will allow people to pay a certain amount of money per month for that space and they can begin to grow food in their assigned space. So that's how it typically happens at a community garden. My garden is a little bit less um, structured. Um, my land is also surrounded by other family members' land. So there is not like an assigned spot. The food that I will be growing will be benefiting my family members that are close to the garden, as well as, you know, other family members that can drive to the garden to pick up food and then to some of the neighbors in the area as well. So I wanted to just share a little bit of a slide with you. So let me see if I can find it to get to the slide. I can't hear you, Sandra. Yeah, Sarah, hold on for one moment. I'm going to go ahead and add your slides to the stage because I actually need to add them. So I'm going to switch out. I'm going to come down so that I can share your slides and then you can go ahead and go over your slides. Okay, this is just a few little um, a recap of what I just talked about. The community, um, we didn't touch on the education piece because there's so much that you can learn um, when you are growing plants, ornamental as well as you know food, edible plants. And so there's the education piece. And for myself, before really, um, or simultaneously with starting the garden, I registered to um, a, become a master gardener volunteer. And most cities have a master gardener volunteer program. And it is a program that will teach you a lot of information about just um, plants and lawn care and, and pesticides and bugs and trees, all kinds of information. And it's normally a free program. Um, 
And I attended that program, which lasts from January to May. And then after that, my responsibility was to do 40 hours at a minimum of volunteer time. And so my volunteer time was at a veteran's um, home, um, which we grew raised bed food and we provided that to the residents there. Um, but there's a variety of different ways that you can um, utilize your volunteer talents with others. And so like um, that was something that was beneficial. So the education part is always ongoing because I am always learning something new about gardening. I'm always learning something new about a plant and maybe how that plant and what, what it could be used for, um, how to better care for a plant. So education is always ongoing with me being a gardener. And I believe that is the case with most people. So if you are not a, currently a gardener and would like to get into gardening, I wanted to share with you um, a site called everbloomseeds.com. It is a, it is a um, company that will provide free seeds for like a average garden. And you can um, reach out to them. They have a ton of different seeds that are available. You could go to the site and you can select what you would like to have. So if you wanted lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, beans, whatever, you would go through their um, site and you would select what you want. And they will send it to you. However, you will pay for um, shipping, which is still very minimum. Like You can see that I have in the middle a screen um, picture of all of the um, seeds that I received from them in my first order. And this total order was less than $10 uh, for the shipping. And I wanted to also just encourage you, if you've never grew anything before, try growing something. And you don't need a lot of room to do that because I am currently doing what's called winter sowing. And that is simply taking milk jugs. You can buy them from a company like Uline.com, U-L-I-N-E.com, or you can go to some of your local businesses like Starbucks, Panera, any business that would have like jugs because they're getting products in that they're using in their business. And you would simply cut the top, uh, most of the top of the jug, except for around the handle part. Um, as you can see in this lower picture, where it's a little bent back, and you would fill that with soil. And then you would put your seeds on, you know, on top of the soil, and depending on the packet of seeds, it will tell you how deep to um, plant the seeds. So some of them are very tiny seeds, and you may just sprinkle them on the top, and then drizzle a little bit of soil on top. Or you may press down just a little bit to get an indent to get that seed into the soil. You would simply close it after that and then tape it up as you can see in the picture above. And you want to label what it is that you um, are going to be growing in the milk jugs. Some people choose to write the name of what is inside the, the seed that they planted or others choose to use a number system. They may say jug number one, and then they maintain um, some kind of system that jug number one is lavender. Jug number two is um, peppermint. So you can choose whatever you feel most comfortable with, but you could start with one jug and grow something and watch it happen. Watch the magic of a seed, you know, um, and it is very, um, it's not time consuming at all. And you put it outside in the winter months and you don't have to really do anything when that seed should be germinating, it will do it on its own. Nature will take care of that. And so you just need to look through, keep the cap off the um, jug and periodically just look in and make sure that the jug is a little bit, you know, dampened, wet. Because if you're leaving it out in the elements, you're probably gonna have some rain and it's going to get inside the jug. But if you have a time period where it's very dry, just spray a little water 
inside the jug to moisten up the soil. So when the seed needs to germinate, it will have the water that it needs to do so. So I wanted to share that with you and hope that you would want to um, be able to do something with um, gardening that's on the small scale if you're not already doing gardening. And so my thoughts are that I would love to see everyone flourish and uh, become a gardener and providing some of their own food. And, and even if you just do it for an experiment, but if you should find yourself needing to supplement um, providing food for yourself, for your family, this, you would have the knowledge to know how to do that. And so um, I thank you all. You know, I, I shared some of the benefits. And one that I really didn't talk a lot about is the environmental awareness. Um, but once you start to grow food, you start to become aware of the environment. Like, do you really want to be putting pesticides on your vegetable foods that you're going to be taking into your body? Or do you really want to be wasteful with water? So I use a rain barrel to collect my water. And that is what I like to provide to my plants. So it's just heightened my awareness of just what I, things that I do. Like I used to throw away coffee grinds, but they can be used in the garden. So now that's something that I, I just maintain and just use it in my garden. Um, eggshells is another one. I used to throw away eggshells and now I dry them out and I crush them up and put them in a blender and then I can use them in my um, garden and other things such as paper bags. Those are things that I can use because it's biodegradable. I can use it in the um, garden. There's so many things that I started um, just doing different things with because I started to see the benefits of them. And I have to tell you, gardening is um, definitely the work of a lifetime. You're never finished. There's always something else that you want to grow, something that you want to enhance your garden. And so I just wanted to um, share that with you. And now I would like to open up the opportunity to answer questions. Who has the first question? What I am not seeing is I'm not seeing any questions. I am seeing that we have one person, Carolyn Coleman, that's speaking and saying hello, everyone. And that might be because we um, we changed the time frame for this afternoon due to the fact of Super Bowl and me not wanting to disrupt my husband from enjoying his day. Mm -hmm. uh, but it will be up on Facebook Live and it's actually going on to, on, on YouTube. So um, we're going to continue to go because I'm going to continue to ask you questions. Carolyn did want to ask, how long have you had your community garden? Since um, 2021. So that's been... That so was... we're moving into 24. But um, yeah. when, when I um, moved into my community garden, it was like a forest. There were, it had been abandoned for 30 years. And so the first thing I had to do was to, um, to work with the county to be able to get permits to be able to, um, to have the trees um, that I wanted to have removed, removed to be able to get um, the land, what they call perk to make sure that it can be, um, a bathroom could be put into the somewhere on the land. So the process for me was it was really coming out of we were still kind of in COVID at that point. And so what was happening is things were moving very slow. You know, there was lots of people that were retiring. There was lots of people that were not working that it was just a time where things had slowed down tremendously. So getting permits for everything, because in order to do anything with the land, I had to get built a building permit. I had to get a, a permit for the driveway. I had to get a permit for electricity, permit um, to have a bathroom. Um, so there is lots of things that, so it was a slow process. So I would say that first, and even just sharing with them, 
the concept of what I wanted to do. So going to the county, because you just can't put up, even though it's residential land, you still can't just start building whatever you want to on the land because um, you can find yourself having issues with the county. So they needed to be clued into the whole process. Um, and one thing, you know, was chronological order. Okay, you got to get a building permit. Okay, you, you got to get your electrician who is licensed and you got to provide information back and you they have to come and inspect it. And then you have to get the um, electrical company and they got to come dig and put wire and then you got your plumber who has to come and put in an irrigation system and you got to get approval for that. Then you can get your water turned on. So the first year and a half was just really taking care of the necessary business to be able to go onto the land to begin doing the gardening because there were lots of trees that had to be excavated. And Carolyn has two more questions. The first is, what can she grow in her jugs? So oh, are... okay. <laughs> you can basically grow whatever you like um, because the purpose of the jug is to just get your plant started. Um, that's not where your plant is going to stay. And so whatever you basically, most seeds are even like a, a sunflower seed is a big seed, a pumpkin seed. You're starting the process in the jug. And then once the um, plant starts to grow, you're now going to take it out of it. And then you're going to put it into either another container, put it in the ground, put it in a raised bed. So you're going to pick what you have available that works for you. So something easy to grow would be like beans are easy if she's into food. Some people are not really into food and they may want to grow just plants and ornamental plants because they like flowers and they can definitely pick out what they want to. Um, they may want to just do herbs. You know, I started off with ornamental plants, then I moved to herbs, then I moved to edibles. Um, so I'm doing all three of them now, but do what you like and what you're going to enjoy. So if you don't grow eggplant, if you don't eat eggplant, do so you want to grow what it is that you want? So if you like tomatoes and you don't want tomatoes all over the place because they take up a lot of space, you can grow cherry tomatoes and that's very doable in a pot. Um, and they have plant bags that you can grow food in. So try, I would say, keep it small in the beginning because you do want to um, be sh ha make sure you have the time to take care of the plants as well as you want to be successful. So if you find yourself maybe taking on too many plants, you may not be able to manage it. So if you like lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumbers, you can start with those three. If you like beans, you can start with beans and okra carrots um, and they do have a lot of miniature um, or dwarf versions of things and so you could pick something that's a dwarf for variety and it wouldn't take up as much space but i would say do whatever makes your heart happy i thank you for that you know it's when, when you're talking about the, the edibles and you're talking about the growing of things, especially in the African-American community where a lot of times money is scarce, right? Yes. And so we go in the grocery store and we'll pay $5.99 for a pound of sweet potatoes when we can actually grow sweet potatoes for little to next to nothing. I mean, you put a, yes. a, a video up the other day on your Kindness Matters groups in on your kindness matters groups and face on facebook and it showed the guy growing sweet potatoes and I'm one like, potato created a thousand potatoes i'm like wait a minute i just went to grocery store because i love sweet potatoes and i just spent five like now for something that they just made a 200 percent profit off of so i'm like i gotta go rethink this thing because you know, so I mean, soon and very soon, I'll be looking at life after corporate America. So I'm not going to be wanting to spend all this money, especially in our community, where we already know the price of things is so very higher, much higher, a lot of times than you know others, you know, other places where we can go to shop. 
But it just amazes me that I'm like, I'm spending all this money when this guy got this carton, got this a cardboard box, the cardboard he took box, he took he took potato, and turned and you it put it on the side, you put what? it in a box, and then let nature do the rest. And as it starts to grow, the slits on the potato, you just cut them off. Then you put the slits, which is the vegetation part that will right. grow out of the potato. You put it in water, let it root, and it won't take long to root it. And then each one of the roots, it becomes another plant that you plant. And right. it, it generates potatoes. Uh, like on an average, they say it's about seven potatoes for every one slit. Right. And so you and you can also cook with the um, the green vegetation from the sweet potato. I think you saw that part as well, right. Sandra. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and so who you know, and it, it just brings me, you know, it just brought me back, you know, especially when I saw him have the green stalk and he was eating the green stalk. He was like. This is edible. He was like, yes. this green is edible. But there, there again goes my whole point during having this month um, and putting the point, putting the spotlight on those things that are important to our community. To and, say, and food is out? very important. I mean, so we right. think about food and you think about when you go in a grocery store, you don't even know right. how that was processed. Right. So, you know, they, put, they spray sometimes some of the yams, for example, right. because they want it to stay looking nice and pretty nice and, and preserved. Right. And so it may have chemicals on it. But if you were to just, as a matter of fact, I just put seven yams in a um, in a planter mm -hmm. and I'm going to be doing exactly that, growing the slits and everything. And because it is a little bit out of season, I'm using a plant light. Mm -hmm. So my plant light is going to provide the plant with what it needs. Mm -hmm. And this way I'm getting a jump start. So once the weather is warmer and I go to put them in the ground, I would already have some plants that are established enough to be able right. to quickly grow. So that's just one example. Uh, celery is another one. The base of the celery, you could just take from the grocery store. After you um, cut your celery and you got the bottom, you can stick that right in the ground and it will grow another celery. Same thing with onions. There's so many things. And so, oh, one of the things that you should check out is um, what's kind of becoming common are seed libraries. Seed libraries are um, you, you, the public libraries. They have a section where you could go and get seeds. And so like here in my town, um, we have a seed library. And I am working with them because I am looking for donations, collecting those donations to make sure that those drawers are full when people are looking to be able to go in to get tomatoes, cucumbers, beans, broccoli, cauliflower, whatever they're looking for. And I'm focused on the edibles with them um, because there are people who need to supplement, you know, with growing some of their food to save money. And so there are many ways to do it. And then the thing that we have, it's a lack of education too. Um, not even so much the space because you don't always have to have a lot of space. So the education part is nobody's really telling people when you um, have that cucumber, save those seeds and dry them out. And now you got seeds to grow more cucumbers. Nobody's saying, you know, oh, when um, you are cooking with green peppers or cutting a green pepper, save those seeds, dry them out and store them in a dry space and use those seeds. And think about how many seeds when I dry out my green peppers or I look at my tomatoes and stuff, how many seeds we have. And we really need to think about this because now with so many foods being genetically modified, it is really a concern. We don't know what we're eating. Right. They're modifying it and they're not telling you what they're modifying it with. Exactly. And then they're modifying the meat, they're modifying the, the, the vegetables. I mean, I was surprised I looked at a mayonnaise jar and they were talking about it was genetically modified. So when you're looking at your labels, look at what to see if it's genetically modified. Right. And I mean, even then, you know, I have a one of my board certified patient advocate friends. She speaks so highly. Her name is Sandra Dingler. She speaks so highly about 
Be mindful of what you're going in the store. Take the time to read what's on that label. Yes. Unfortunately, and another thing about the African-American community, a lot of our African-American communities are, are, are worldwide known for being food deserts. That means right. there's no food available for you, no healthy food available healthy for food. you to actually be able to go in the store and buy. So what happens is a lot of us, we take that unhealthy food in, that processed food, that genetically modified food in, we take that food in, it gets into our system. Our young kids have it in their system. If you're a woman, woman and you are in the stage where you're able to reproduce, you have the likelihood that that passes on to your child. And so it just continues to grow and it continues to go out of, uh, it continues to negatively impact our community. So not many people will actually tell you, look, take the cucumber. When you finish eating the cucumber, dry it out. You can grow that inside or this is what you do in order to make sure that you are eating healthy. Like I said, back to the sweet potato, the green stalk, very easily in herb. But nobody tells us that. They just tell us to eat the sweet potato. Right. I did something last, a couple of weeks ago, I did something. And I just wanted to see what happened. I had a white potato, which I don't eat. But my husband does. And there's a whole story for a different day. So I brought the white potato. And he didn't eat. I brought two. He only ate one. And I had it sitting on my counter. And I went to dip the throw it in the garbage. And all those, you know, the speed, the, the sprouts started populating. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm Each like, one of those could right. be a plant. Each exactly. One. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I thought about when I saw your sweet potato video. I was like, oh, my God, this could have been a white. It could have been eight, eight different plants. Each one of them, you just cut them into a section and you put it, you can put them directly in the ground. Right. And each one of those would generate potatoes. Right. And I think that. We need more, um, we need just more advocates to talk about how to grow food, the benefits of growing food, right. um, just really to be out there and teach people how to eat differently because it does impact our health. It does impact our sleep. Right. It does impact all these diseases that people have now. Right. They're finding that the increase is really um, in autisms and diabetes and cancer, all of these diseases. And, and one thing that I wanted to um, share that's a little bit off, but I think it's timely, is that when I was growing up and going to my grandparents' um, farm, we didn't wear shoes. We were barefoot and we would run around and we would just enjoy our time, you know, out in the yard. Statistically, they found that when people started wearing shoes, that they started getting all these different illnesses. So there is a magnetic pull in the earth. And when you are connected to it without shoes, it's very healing for your body. So we need to get back to some of these natural things being without our shoes and connecting with Mother Earth. Um, and I am such a believer in just following what, how nature does things. When it comes to gardening, I'm looking at, well, how is nature doing it? Do we really have to go out and buy fertilizer? And nobody going out to the forest and um, putting fertilizer out in the forest or anything. What's happening is the trees are shedding their leaves. Those leaves are providing nutrition that's going back into the earth and it's going to provide the nutrients that are needed. And, and it's a cycle. And so look at what nature is doing and almost all of it is, is free, but the stuff that they'll teach you is all stuff that is about costing you money to do it. Yeah. We live in the economic, I tell people this all the time, even when it comes down to traditional healthcare, everything, we live in an economic society. It's a capitalistic economic society. How does that impact someone that's just barely making it, just barely scrubbing by? It negatively impacts them to the point where they give up those things in which they should be doing because they have to do, have to spend their money on things that they really shouldn't be spending their money on. 
or that's being overpriced and overcharged and all of that stuff. Nobody's teaching, uh, especially African Americans. Nobody's teaching period people. Period. But because this is Black History Month, I've been focusing a lot of our conversation on our community, a community that's dear to me because I belong to that community. Mm -hmm. Nobody's taking the time to explain to you, hey, you know what? You spent, and I, I, I'll give you a, a prime example, right? I was in, I have fallen in love. My, my weakest indulgent is Cold Stone Creamery. Why? Mm. Because they now have a non-dairy based um they now have a non-dairy based product so mm -hmm. i like their silk almond um cream and i was in the store buying some and i told the gentleman i was like you know what this don't make no sense as much as many times as i come in here and he asked me and this was uh, he was an african-american man and he asked me he said well can i ask you something and i said yes what is it he was like, since you come in here so much, have you ever thought about investing and becoming a partner? And it, you know, it. I was like, you know what? No, but I really, there's really something I need to look into. And this goes with the same thing with food. Why are we paying so much for all of this food when we can invest in our own farmery? We can invest in our own garden, and we can have the stuff so that we can take the money that we have and go out and buy other things that will bring us additional monetary value well social right. media plays a big part in it because right. it it's keeps top of mind for many people things that right. shouldn't be top of mind right. so you you look at how people are living and you look at how many the messages and we're, look i was just listening to the news today when they were talking about it was like the average commercial for the super bowl is seven million dollars for yeah. a 30 second commercial, commercial. Yeah. So, so, $7 million. You know how many people could eat food off right. of that money? But right. no, because we are, like you said, economics is the big thing, but we there are now more people that are moving to the, moving back to wanting to grow their own food. Right. They're homesteaders, they're, they're burned out, they've been on the treadmill, they realize that it's so hard to get off the treadmill of life with the, you know, everything, the way the structure is set up. And they're going back to say, I want to be off grid. I want to be off the treadmill. I'm going to go, I'm going to grow some chickens and um, let my chickens uh, produce my protein. I'm going to grow my own food. And I know I belong to a, um, a Facebook group, which is for black homesteaders, because that's the word there, homesteaders. They're just about just coming off the grid and, and and just getting back to nature and everything so they're providing things and they're buying land um that they are um communities where they are saying hey if you want to live this lifestyle like this too you, you, i saw just yesterday or the day before where um one homesteader brought 70 acres of land in north carolina and she was selling seven acres if you're looking to follow that same kind of model of being a homesteader, seven acres of land for 14,000 something dollars. So less than $15,000, you could get seven acres of land. You can grow tons of food and have tons of animals of your choice for less than $15,000 and provide for yourself and many other people. You know, our grandparents knew how to can food. They knew how to smoke stuff. We have lost that knowledge and we need to get reconnected to be able to try some of these things and see the benefit of them. You know, even when I think about just what we drink, um, when I first came to North Carolina, I was amazed at all the iced teas, lemonades, raspberry lemonade, all kinds of stuff filled with sugar. And we know all of that sugar creates problems within our body. Whereas water, which we're 75% made of, um, is free. And so we need to get back to having wells and knowing that we got some water because we don't want to find ourselves that if they want to take a hit to the water company that we have no other choice of how we're going to provide water for ourselves. Because, you know, sometimes you see the panic even trying to get um, bottled water. So for me, I, I'm thankful to have a well on my land 
So and collecting rainwater is, is another way too. We need to start to think differently about what are some of the things that I can do to enhance my life, you know, that could provide me with food, that could provide me with um, fresh water. Um, what are ways is giving me physical exercise, is giving me relationships, you know, with other people with like mind that's doing these things. With YouTube readily available, you can find YouTubes on everything. And one of my favorite is a documentary called Back to Eden. And there's um, the, the, it, the documentary focuses on look at what God has already provided for us. Why are we going out of our way to do something different? He's provided for us to make our own soil with our own leaves, with um, our grasses, all of the stuff that we need to create our own soil. He's provided us with seeds. You know, he's provided us with all of the things that we need to do. Wood chips, they're free. You can get them free from any um, company that shred trees. So, so much of what we need to start a garden and be successful at it it's basically free for us. Seeds are free. You can get them from a seed library. You can get them from Everbloom. You can get them from Herloom. Um, is another. There's lots of different companies that make Herloom seeds, and a lot of them you can get seeds for almost nothing. Um, you can go to the dollar store. They have high germination rates, and their seeds are only 25 cents a pack. So I encourage people to give gardening a try. Yeah, and you know what? And, it, and it's an option that not many people think about. And options are what one of, one of the factors that Chomps Many Helps put in to what it's doing as far as its submission is because we realize that patients just don't, especially our patients, they just are not aware of all the resources that are available to them that they should be taken a part of because there's really not many people telling them about the resources available for them to take part of it. Um, Carolyn is answered, and thank you, Sheree, for coming in today. If you have a question that you would like to ask in reference to gardening, please go ahead and raise your hand. I'd love to bring you on stage. Um, Carolyn is saying she planted tomatoes and the following year, the soil went ungrowable. Is that- Unbearable. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not understanding Carolyn. After that, she says, is that a word or I'm so I'm not really understanding. Um, well, the, the nutrients when a plant grows is it's taking up the nutrients from the soil. Mm -hmm. So if the tomato plants took up the nutrient, um, her soil would need to be amended is the word that they call it amending your soil. So the soil does need to be amended often because the plant is taking up the nutrients in order to grow. So you can, um, some people use fertilizer and, and what she can do is she can have her soil tested. I don't know where she lives, but in uh, most states they have what's called a, an extension office. And the extension office is a place that you could go get a soil kit or many, you could get in North Carolina, you could get up to 10. And you take your soil there and they will test the soil to see what is um, it in need of. Maybe it needs some um, potassium. Maybe it needs, you know, um, it could be nitrogen. It may need nitrogen. So once you get the soil tested, it comes back with the analysis and tell you exactly what you need to add back to the soil to be able to make the soil uh, balance for plants to grow. And then depending on what plant you grow, some plants like um, different levels of acidity. So you would need to know what you're going to grow in that particular soil to determine what kind of soil it likes. Does it needs to have more nitrogen, you know, phosphorus, or, you know, what does it need potassium? So when you look at most bags, they have three different codes on it for the fertilizer and they have different strengths. So it may say, five, 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 10, 10, 10, when you go to buy fertilizer, but her soil probably needs to be amended and she can have her soil tested to be able to determine what is it lacking to and bring so it back to balance. And so where would you go to get your soil tested? 
um, the extension is called E X T E N S I O N. Most states, if you Google and put in the or the Department of Agriculture, and so one or that you can put those both in and Google them. And once you do, you can reach out to them and say, they usually have a hotline during business hours in North Carolina or in my county is from nine to five, Monday through Friday. You can call and say, this is my situation. They will answer questions. If you um, want a soil test, you can go into their office and get a box, go get your soil, They'll tell you what to do, take your soil back to them. They'll send it off to be analyzed. And then they will give you a report that will be run to tell you exactly what is needed to um, bring that soil back to a healthy point. And thank you, Sarah, for joining us. Okay, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll bring you up so you can ask. Okay, so I'm seeing that and we're... We we are getting ready to close out in the next five minutes. I am actually also seeing, I have, there's two questions. Um, one is from Carolyn, and Carolyn's question is, does the community really help with the garden? It depends on the garden, yes, yes. If it's a successful garden, the community will be helping. In some cases, like I said, your space is allocated to you. If you don't take care of your space, nobody else is just necessarily may go over and take care of it. Um, in my case, my garden is located on my grandparents' land, where and there's still relatives living in right next to the garden. So I have relatives really, really close by, and I have a lot. I have social media that I share ongoing, as you know, Sandra, and Ida's community garden. I'm always sharing about what people are doing. I get help from strangers. I get help from so many different people. Um, people, some people help financially. Some people help with coming out and and um, helping with with some of the physical stuff. Some people help with um, just teaching me knowledge about how to grow plants. Um, they may know something that I don't know. Some people help with swapping seeds. There's many different ways, but yes, the goal is to engage others to get the synergy to be more successful in gardening. And then I do have another question. I do have another question. That question is this, where is Ida Community Garden located? And well, actually it's a twofold question. Where is Ida Community Garden located? And does Ida Community Garden now have it where outside people can come and visit? Okay. So Ida's Community... Ida's Community Garden is located at in Sanford, North Carolina. Hold on for one second. I think we're picking up noise. It might need you to actually lower your volume on your phone or on your computer. But let's see what happens. Okay, is this better? Yes, that's better. Okay, so Ida's Community Garden is located um, on Madougal Road in Sanford, North Carolina. And um, at this time, we really haven't included coming to the garden to a lot of um, outside family members. Um, it will be opening up probably, I would say, more so this year um, because we wanted to kind of get things organized and I also want to be a little bit mindful uh, and kind of feel comfortable with bringing in people that have no idea, you know, who they are coming into the area. What, And so I need to figure out a way to do it that I still feel like it creates a safe environment for um, Ida's Community Garden. And are, are you aware of any community gardens 
within the United States for people where they do have outside people? That oh, can lots of them. Most of them are outside people. Um, you can Google in your county and put in um, community gardens. I am quite sure you're going to find that there's tons of them out there. Um, I'm familiar with a lot, even my area. And all you have to basically do is go to the community garden to find out who's managing it, to find out what the requirements are for that community garden. But in most cases, you they ask for a small fee. So you may be paying $25 a year, and then they may give you an allocated space of four by six feet, or depending on how big the garden is. There may be other requirements, like I'm working with, as a mentor to a um, community garden coming up soon. And that particular one is just for county employees. So it could depend on what the motive is for you know that particular garden. It could be geared towards homeless people, or as they not, they don't refer to them as homeless. Now they refer to them, Sandra, you may know the term now. It's no longer, Homeless. Transient. It's transient. Okay, so transient. So it could be a garden that is just really set up for that, or it could be a garden. The one that I did my volunteer work was at a veteran's home. So it depends on the motive of the um, for the garden. But I would think that you could definitely connect and find a garden in your area or whoever is looking for one. So you just brought up another really good point, and that's this. We absolutely have no reason to say that, well, gardening is, you know, we don't have a space to garden. Because you just said that you could go to could find a community garden, and, and I'm, I'm going to actually really look into this tomorrow. No, I, and let me know, because it should be easy for you. Yeah, find a community garden in the area in which you live in, pay a small fee you can go in there and grow your own stuff so there's not a reason at all um to not and i'm sure that those of us that are living in um urban areas that might be like well sandra okay well you say 25 dollars. i ain't got no 25 dollars for that some of them it may be free right that's what i'm saying call and see if it's free call and say hey you know my funds are really limited I really do need the help, you know, try to eat healthy, get my family eating healthy. Um, could you, you know, is there a fee for me? You know, and you may get a scholarship or you may be able to barter with them. So there is absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be taking a part in growing our own food through yeah. our own food. Sandra. Growing our own plants, growing you may our have own your food. own. You may have people that you know that have space right. that you can grow on their land. So you may say, okay, I don't have the space, but I have enough to do my herbs um, because they also have stackables as well. So you could grow a little tower of food of different herbs, or you could find someone who has a garden and ask, could you carve out a space for me and, and make an agreement with them and be a person of your word for what it is that you said you could, you would do because most gardeners could use help in their garden. But they want to make sure that the people that they're inviting into that personal space um, that they feel like um, is is going to be someone is a good fit for them. Get those seeds from the library. Go on websites and um, get free seeds. You can um, go to some of the communities that are seed communities or swap seed clubs. And if you say like, I'm new, I, I don't have any seeds to swap, but I would like tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, um, asparagus, whatever. There are so many kind people out there. People will send seeds. And you know, and if you have someone who would like some seeds, I do have seeds. Um, so if Carolyn would like some seeds to get started, let me know what kind of seeds that she would like. I probably already have it in my inventory. And Sandra, I'd like to get you started with some herbs. <laughs> and like I said, I'm all for it. And now that you told me that there are community guys where you can actually go and get space from and see what space they have available, I'm even more for it now because I didn't know that you could go, you know, you could find a community garden 
that would ahead and say, hey, do you have space? You know, I really don't have a space here. But if they have space somewhere else that, you know, I could, you know, go and use and get a garden, grow, get a garden grow. And I would love it because with me, you know, it's one thing about me. I follow I follow a high grade medical treatment team now. I have to because of the health challenges that I have myself. So I have traditional doctors and I have my functional medicine, nutritional doctors that all push or, you know, they, their push is for me to have herbs. Well, if I can get those herbs naturally, it's better for me, right? It's better for me than, you know, going into the store and getting some synthetically made herbs and saying, I'm doing this when I'm really Mm -hmm. not doing it because I'm really not getting the full, just, you know, the full benefit of it being grown naturally. Well, send me the list of some of your herbs because you can dry herbs out Mm -hmm. and they can be sent to you. So Mm -hmm. it may not be a fresh herb, it'll be a dried herb. So there are ways that you could get your herbs probably at, um, you know, through different people bartering. Right. Yeah. So I would, I would like to take this offline and see what herbs you're, you're in need of and see what we could do to get you those herbs. Okay, that would be appreciative. And I'm sure Carolyn is appreciative of the fact that you actually said that let her know, let you know what herbs she needs so that she could get started as well. So it's not even just herbs, you know, just let me know what it, what food she would like to try to grow. Because I know in her response, she said that she would like to do vegetables. So Mm -hmm. doing vegetables, you know, she'll let you know what vegetables that is that she wants to try and she could try it, I'm sure. Because she's a nurse and because she's a good friend of mine, and you know that that old saying that birds of a feather flock together, I'm sure that she will be taking you up on your offer to let her know what okay. vegetables she like, what vegetables she would like to grow. And now that she knows where she can actually go get her soil tested to make sure that they don't lose ne- nutrient and they don't lose the nutritious value. That she'll be able to go. Well, and you can that. give her my contact information, okay. and she can feel free to reach out to me. And um, I don't know where she is, what stage of life she's in, what chapter, because there are so many programs that teach about so much of this stuff that are free. Um, so if I can guide her, and and in what state is she in? Chicago? No, she's in Alabama. Alabama. Oh, okay. Well, I'm quite sure they got all kinds of programs in Alabama, but I can work with her. Um, so share the, my information with her and I will support her and would love to see her move into the gardening world. And that I will do. I do want to actually let you know that this is being shared via Facebook live. This is also being shared on YouTube. So for those of you that will be viewing this on Facebook Live, on YouTube, at whatever time you have available for you to to verify it uh, or to view it, what I will encourage you to do is go ahead and send me an email if you would like more information from Sarah or if you need, you know, you want to know she has whatever seeds you're interested in growing or she could put you in the correct area of where you can go get those seeds from because this is all about our health. It's about our health. It's about our mental and our physical health. And while many people overlook the fact that gardening does indeed help with both your mental and your physical health, it does. Going into a garden, I know whenever I go outside, not so much into a garden, I know that whenever I go outside, especially during the spring or the summer months, I feel so much better because I'm breathing in the air. I'm breathing in that function of an air. I'm not in the house in confined corners, which, you know, for the most part, due to some health issues, I don't really venture outside that often during the winter months. So I welcome the spring and I welcome the summer just so that I can get out. So I can only imagine walking every day through a garden and just the experiencing bird. the yeah. spirituality, no yeah. matter what religious piece you are, believing, being able to, you know, just really like get into that nature thing and just admiring and, and taking in those smells and and doing all that stuff you know i have a setup at home i have a salt i have a salt machine and in that salt machine especially during the winter months i put at a put eucalyptus or mint or you know any of the other ones that i get rosewood to actually give me a smell a sense of being in nature 
but actually being in nature is such a benefit. It's such a mental and physical health benefit to being out in nature. Well, thanks for sharing that, Sandra, um, because, you know, I am a I am a believer in God and I I grew up as a Christian and I often think back to the very first gift that God gave man was a garden. He put us in a garden. He uh, provided everything that we needed in that garden. And that is so very very true and, and you know and and you know, I myself also, once again, I, I follow God. I know, you know, some of my friends have different spiritual relief, beliefs and they do, you know, go about things spiritually different. But, you know, it does everyone, white, black, green, purple, Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, you name it. It, it being in a garden just allows that spiritual peace to come yes. into existence it brings you closer to whatever spiritual entity that you you know that you may look forward to to get your spiritualistic life together with that being said miss sarah i am going to thank you so very much um carolyn is saying thank you so much as wow. well um once again i'm sure she will be back in contact with you i'm sure i may get some others that look at this at a later time and say, hey, Sandra, can you give me the information for the lady with the gardening? Because I want to ask her some questions. Um, by all means, I will do what I can do to make sure that you get that and so that they get the information. This is all about us helping each other during this Black History Month. Black oh, health yeah. history. So yeah. thank you. And I wish you the rest of a beautiful day. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.